the word yoga has come to be associated with certain practices, techniques, etc. But in its origin, the word actually implies an ascent or a growth out of a divided state or condition of our being into a state of unity and oneness. That is how Savitri in one line describes yoga. To feel love and oneness is to live. So we are not yet living fully. <clears throat> the word yoga itself means one, to unite, yukta. So essentially it is to ascend from this state in which we are, a dark and fallen state, we may not realize it. They, there are creatures who don't realize that they are leading a very limited existence. But those who can see, they feel how miserable this life is. And they bid them to come out of it. But like that fable of Mushaka Bhava, the Mushaka wants to remain a Mushaka. It seems, thinks it's his whole world. And as beautifully put by one of the modern authors, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls it a butterfly. <clears throat> so we live in a certain world which is very dear and important to us. We cherish it, we love it, we hold on to it. And that holds us. And when we are afraid of what is beyond it, you know, we hear it's very nice, uh, just now, uh, Vivek Ji was mentioning about the number of audience, etc. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. What is important is if just one person, two persons, or a few dare to tread the sunlit path. That is always few. Story of Guru Nanak comes to my mind when his disciple tells him, you have number of followers. He says, oh really? Modern Guru Nanak. So he says, yeah, you have so many, see, so many are there. He says, acha, we'll try it. So next day he says, okay, uh, I'm going on an excursion, who will come with me? All the whole village is ready with all the packed lunches and you know, how in India you don't go alone, you travel with everything. All It's a picnic, Guruji is going and he has asked for excursion, why not? So, <clears throat> as they climb, we were reading this play about ascent of God, ascent to truth. So, after some time, many of them get tired. And they say, Guruji, shall we stop for, have, shall we have a lunch break? At least tea. We say, no, no, no. You know, I have to reach. Okay, they all start. After some time, many of them begin to get tired. And they begin to slowly, slowly start falling off the way. And he, as he goes further, the way becomes more and more difficult. And more and more people begin to drop out. They didn't know what they are signing in for. You know, <laughs> when we sign up for yoga, we don't read there are many things in small prints. <clears throat> so they don't know. Then after some time, they see this guru is just moving on. His beard has grown. He is looking fierce. He is no more looking that nice, neat, you know handsome Guruji. So he says, Guruji, are you sure everything is okay with you? They begin to doubt the Guru's sanity. Finally, everybody drops off except one person who had asked him the question that I believe you have many disciples. So when he alone is left, the Guru turns and says, do you want to come along or you want to <laughs> rest? He says, no, I have got my answer, but I want to stick on. And somebody asked Shirobindo, what is the secret of this path? Many interesting secrets is revealed. And this used to be one of the things which in the beginnings was told. Either stick on to the path somehow or allow the path to stick on to you. Even now when people go to the ashram, some of the old sadhaks, you know when newcomers go and they are all into oh yoga I have come for sadhana of course most of the people are aware of the whole background and they are they have already formed a routine in their mind oh every day morning I will do this and afternoon I will do this and you know so most of the old sadhaks will say just hold on for one year just stay here 
Achha, is it? Of course, I have left everything to stay here. He says, wait. After one year, we will ask, take this, talk this about it again. Then slowly people realize that how difficult it is to, just to stay in the ashram. Just to live near the divine. So, while it looks very nice, it's a growth. Growth out of a limited state into a state of oneness. Growth out of darkness into the light. Growth out of a state of ugliness into beauty and truth. But the journey is surely not so easy. As Shuminda wrote in one of his famous letters, no yoga is easy. When people complain, you know, it's difficult yoga. He said, no yoga is easy. In fact, for that matter, no effort to improve ourselves is easy. And he added like French without tears. No, it's, it's not like that. It's a difficult process. No doubt about it. And if somebody conceals that truth, it's not fair upon those who are signing in for it. Sri never hid the challenges that meet the person on the path. So now, very often when we speak about the path and when we speak about yoga as an ascent, we take it that this is, there is a state of division, of ignorance, of darkness, of ugliness, of evil, of pain and suffering. And there is another state, which is a state of peace and harmony and beauty and light and truth. And that state, we use different names depending on the angle of vision. Sometimes we catch one or two aspects of that state, which are the gods. And this is also given a name, normally world or you know creation or whatever. And we want to climb from this into that. And as we are saying, it's a very challenging journey. Any yoga if we take. If you take it in the true sense and real earnest, take a simple thing like hot yoga. Normally people think that, you know, this is the yoga means uh, standing upside down. But hot yoga itself, if you really practice in the real sense, and what is the goal? Goal is just to liberate the consciousness within the boundary of the physical body. Not from the mind and the vital, just from the confines of the physical body and thereby explore, discover new possibilities. The body itself can become light, it can grow, it can expand, it can resist the assault of, you know, weapons and, uh, you know, it can resist burning. Many things it can. It can resist decay, degeneration, disease. So, even that, the true hot yoga is doing it for hours, 8 hours, 9 hours, 10 hours. Not what we do, uh, more like a fitness exercise. If you really take it in the sense of yoga. So that's why sometimes good to use the right word, not yoga. We use yoga very casually. Are you going for yoga with a yoga mat in the hand and you know after half an hour yoga is over. So, <laughs> I mean I understand if this uh, is uh, told uh, by people who are really, who don't know. But when particularly we uh, with an Indian background say so casually and loosely, oh I do yoga every day. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not good because yoga is it's not about this at all. Even hat yoga, just to speak of one path of yoga with one limited goal. Hat yoga doesn't liberate us from the confines of the mind. That's why hat yogis can become terribly sometimes egoistic because they make the consciousness free from the body, not from the mind. So the ego remains, the shell of the ego remains. And even that is so difficult. Raj yoga, hours on meditation, for a goal of the complete liberation of the consciousness within the mind and possibilities of the mind. Many faculties, prakamme, vaishita, vasita, powers which are lying asleep, dormant, telepathy, clear ones, all these awaken in the yogi and therefore he escapes from the narrow boundaries of the mind and develops many, many new things. There is a tremendous capacity of control of the mind over the body, even over events and situations in an outer life. But ask the true Raj Yogi, not the popular version of it. For hours and hours they sit for meditation. There have been people in ashram for four hours, five hours, six hours. At one time, uh, Pavitra Da asked Shurbindo that I am able to sit for three to four hours in meditation at a stretch. And I want to increase it now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can't imagine. So they, that is one part. Then... Another path came, uh, which, you know, the path evolves as we evolve. So, hot yoga is given to man in the age when he was very robust and, you know, he was living in the jungles. He was con conscious largely of his body. Then as he becomes conscious more of his mind, 
then raj yoga then comes when he becomes conscious of his inner being which is many tangled um, thoughts and feelings and impulses and emotions and will and desire he is given in still more uh, completer path the yoga of the gita where you use many parts many powers and you know given to us within the realm of nature to pierce the whole and come out of this state of ignorance and delusion in which we are caught into the truth of unity and light and freedom of infinity so there is you know the path also evolves as human consciousness evolves and then there are many other paths we'll not touch upon that there is the path of the buddha the eightfold path and the law these this path of christ and of course uh, that is how the journey goes on there is the path of tantra which plays with nature and the forces in nature and goes further so shirobindo had seen through and practiced and realized the truth of these paths and even the mother there are prayers of the mother where she says thou hast made me taste the realizations of each and every path and then she comes back and says no this is inadequate this is imperfect this is incomplete we can at the most pierce a hole from the zone of ignorance and escape into light but we cannot stay there after a while we have to come back if we have to lead life here otherwise we have a choice and the ancient yogis speak about it that you withdraw but don't come back stay in a state of trance and for if you stay in a state of trance for um, 42 days it has been said that the body will dissolve you know we have stories like that in our indian thought that the yogin doesn't come back into this mm-hmm. and so the body dissolves and you enter into that beat it beatific state but if you want to maintain a connection with the world you have to come back so when you come back it is again the life of ignorance and the instruments which are built of ignorance and you have to use them because that's the material at your disposal you have seen beauty you have heard the music of the higher spheres but you cannot express it here because the instruments are not ready the faculties are not developed shobindo was not happy with this half hearted effort we read about you know those lines the sages who ponder ponder in an unsubstantial light and the wise who climb climb but one half they see but one half of truth so he wanted this not enough this story has been going on for long and it had its purpose it had its role now the time has come to invade this very sphere of darkness with the light from beyond now as we have said even the journey ascent out of darkness is not easy because the very first steps to start with what do we hold on to very often people ask this question how do i begin so everybody wants a fixed way to begin now you know in swimming pool you can talk about it that begin from this end from the shallow pool go towards the deeper end this is the beginning that is the end but what do you say when you talk about the ocean so you know traditional paths are open often like swimming pool well defined well defined beginning well defined end well defined techniques but what is the perfect technique when the ocean because this creation is an ocean there are two oceans the veda speak of that there is a ocean above the ocean of light and there is the ocean below aprakritim salilam the dark ocean now this has to be invaded by that so what is the perfect technique of a world changing yoga and shubindu say there is no perfect technique it's not about technique and methods it's not that you have to do this and that but we have to know touch the core the essence what really is it the key that we can hold on to and if we have the key then the rest becomes easy and simple and all his life shubindo's effort was to give that key to man to make it easier and easier and easier and this is a method he has followed all through you see what he did for india's freedom struggle people often didn't understand when shubindo left the scene or so it seemed people said oh you have left the freedom struggle and gone away some people were very unhappy for instance there were charu chandra dath is you know who used to call shubindo chief and he was very angry that shurbindo left and went away not realizing what he had done so shurbindo in his own letters he writes no all the lines along which freedom has to come they were already released and established they were already done 
and then he knew he was assured that the freedom will come and then he withdrew what had he done really if you really see what he had done was awakened the sense of mother in the country it is not about fighting against british fighting against the mughals fighting against the greeks we have been doing it but it's about fighting against our own limited sense the limited self even if you win the country if you remain a limited being then what will happen what should be the force of gundaism bolsh gunda raj bolshevism things look ominous so all the time he was awakening inspiring that if people can awaken to the sense that this is not just a piece of land but she is mother mother india a living goddess then we will do things for her then we will be her force will enter into us and that's precisely what he does in durga stroth you know he saw mother india as a living goddess and you know he calls her durga and he says mother durga enter into our bodies with the yogic strength mother durga slay the enemies mother durga you carry us so essentially he wanted us to establish the sense of the divine mother in the limits of the nation so that we can after that walk the path with our head held high without bothering about means and instruments because they will develop they will develop because of this release of this inner energy we have the famous vision of swami vivekananda when he saw uh, mother india while walking in himalayas in chains iron chains and all and he is very much overtaken and by emotion and wants india to be free and suddenly the mother appears before him golden resplendent she says you think that anybody can bind me it is because i have chosen to be like this and i'll come back in this form so this is the secret to awaken that central truth then he shifted on to a still greater venture and which is the venture of emancipation of mankind it was not enough that a country is liberated and some people wake up to this greater reality but emancipation of mankind the whole the human race as such and there again he was doing the same thing and the same thing was to awaken the mother and um, establish her in our midst nalini da describes it very beautifully in one of his essays that before mother's coming they all had a bohemian lifestyle they would come live the way they wanted they would go here there nobody you know sometimes they would ask shubindu about some instruction and shubindu would give them that instruction about yoga but there was nothing systematic nothing orderly and then he says then suddenly mother came and when mother came her life began to change just because she is there and shubindu the big thing that he did was to establish the mother in our midst now she began to by her own example by her own pressure of the the power that she be, uh, held within herself and she had realized she began to mold humanity by her mere presence and shubindu knew ki the moment she is there rest of the things will become easier and easier so when niroda asked him what is the central secret of this yoga so shubindu says there are two secrets of this yoga the first is to open psychically to the mother then he did not write anything further so niroda says what is the second secret as if that was not necessary so he says to aspire for the divine life because we can open to the mother seeking some protection and blessing for our worldly life for other things and she is the divine mother she will do it why not she will do everything for us but the best is if we open to her to change ourselves so this is the highest privilege given to man so this is what she was Uh, he was establishing in our midst the divine mother and teaching us how to open to her this is how he was making the yoga easier and easier and that's why when people would often ask what is the technique of this yoga well technique is lay all on her she is the cause of all open to the divine mother then he saw that even that is very difficult because human consciousness resists it you know cannot surrender easily so he said okay let me use a means which is very impersonal and universal at the same time which people will not resist and therefore he embodied that power and consciousness that force of the divine mother in the book savitri now book people will read now they, you know hopefully and as they will read they will come in contact with the consciousness of the divine mother what is savitri but a story of the divine mother if we ask in one word 
it's not philosophy or you know difficult poetry all these are just our words if we look at savitri very simply like we have the tradition of ramayana the bhagavat what is ramayana the story of lord rama what is bhagavat the story of krishna what is savitri the story of the incarnation of the divine mother as simple as that and we read it like that and where does the story begin it begins by introducing the divine mother who comes into this darkness because it's difficult for man to ascend out of the darkness because of many things most of all we love darkness it's very difficult to um, touch that light and remain there man wants to come back we read this uh, these lines that you know dim in human hearts the ascending fire at another place in savitri shubindu says heaven's call is rare rare at the heart that heeds because you know we are accustomed to the mud from which we climb whose law we know and we want to slide back that's why you know people uh, go to pondicherry and you know ashram samadhi ah wonderful even those who live there they face the same challenge in a much greater way so you know you are there right the lord is there so what should be the natural thing to give yourself and say wow that's it that's my life but what happens after 15 20 minutes ask anybody who has gone to the samadhi and everybody will say it's wonderful i'm sure it's a universal experience uh, many many must have gone there isn't it so ask them uh, why don't would you like to live there all the time no 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 you know that's <laughs> people want to come out after some time even when the cell phone is in silent they begin to hear some sounds some sometimes a very strange sight i have seen and it is i have never understood it you know somebody walks into the samadhi you have the uh, silent cell phone sometimes people forget that is okay nothing wrong with it they walk up to the samadhi i have actually seen it and i have wondered ki oh my god this also happens and the person is about to you know probably getting ready to do something maybe bow down or something and the cell phone rings and you see the hurried steps as if you know world will crash if you don't take that call it looks like you know many times when we discuss uh, and debate on a dining table we discuss as if the if we don't decide the future of a country the country will finish off so you know i use this now you know whenever we sit and discuss i if somebody asks what are you doing i say we are deciding the future of the world you know <laughs> because that's what we believe so we rush out as if you know something is going to happen and the person is so wa- much waiting that you know the call should not get cut are you can call back what is there but so this is our state present state we cannot live and breathe in that air it is so beautiful so powerful so wonderful people have felt it but it's you know so laborious we cannot breathe it for long even when people go sometimes you know all the way the journey and you know another thing i'm just showing some of the challenges that come in the life of yoga through real practical examples so sometimes you ask okay um, why don't you come oh no when mother will call me so when mother will call me you will go but for uh, you know if mother in law calls you rush you take the you know immediate plane ticket and go there you don't worry about it so what is this mother will call me has she called us only once uh, call doesn't mean she will send a plane ticket with booking and say you know you have been booked in par guest house please my child come i'll be gratified and the, uh, you will do a great favor to me by coming it's a joy it's a opportunity to breathe those few minutes i remember uh, hasmukh bhai telling this incident and i was deeply touched you know once he came to surat and he was thinking i have just one day or should i go to pondicherry or not and he called up usha ben you know she is uh, no more with us and what a wonderful lady how beautifully she left her body so he called her and she said so uh, when are you coming he said i don't know i am thinking you know uh, i i have very little time maybe if i come i'll be able to come just for an hour or two he said come come for an hour or two it is worth it look at the attitude come for an hour or two doesn't matter and we have it in our tradition ek ghadi ya do ghadi aadho mein puniyad tulsi sangati sadhu ki hare koti aparad we don't know what mother will do in those few moments so this is the big challenge which he saw that something in us resists and 
we can't even discover it that's the big problem you know what to do we can't discover it because we are surrounded with a giant ignorance and it is a strong grip on our nature it will give 100 reasons 100 excuses sometime people had very strange excuses i don't want to go to the mother when i am unclean that is as good as saying i will wait for eternity i mean if i have to clean up myself with my own power then uh, i don't really need the divine <laughs> i am divine somebody asked shurbindo about you know sadhaks in the ashram he said they are sadhaks they are not siddhas if you are a siddha you don't need to be anywhere near the divine you have discovered the divine so this need this he he knew the challenges of human nature and so the path that he wanted and which he was creating and carving was the sanlit path it is to make the process easier and easier and easier he didn't want to give us a fixed method and technique because he knew it is difficult he will tell us that okay every day sit one hour in meditation and mind you i am not saying something which i have not seen i am well conversant with many ashrams many paths and gone to all so many places in the world spiritual places and all are very fine but you know uh, there are people who are given this uh, thing that two hours a day you have to meditate and they sit religiously and is it so simple sitting and meditating are two very different things those who meditate don't need to sit and those who need to sit are still far from the real meditation there is a very nice you know kabir das says sadho sahaj samadhi bhali when meditation becomes natural and normal because you don't want to come out of that state it's so wonderful who would want to really not meditate when mother was asked that you know aren't these methods useful she was asked about tell us something about meditation she says people often think that to sit in meditation for many hours is the sign of great uh, yoga she says no many people uh, do their meditation as if they are paying a debt to god and she says it's not a sign of progress the sign of progress is when it is impossible for you not to meditate because you know it's so much of inwardness that develops that we want to breathe that air live in that zone and how does that state come so that's why when so the disciple asked that uh, but still you know techniques are and methods are useful aren't they she said yes but we are not seeking for a technique or method for its own sake we are not seeking that so all through shubindo wanted to make the journey easier for man and the path that he gave i think that's the subject you asked is the sanlit path now what is the difference normally we have the lamp lit path the mind mind decides everything what it should do where it should begin so when we ask this question how do we begin it's nothing but a mental question how do i begin we can tell the mother i don't know how to begin mother she will carry us she will not only say she will carry us i know you don't know how to begin it's honest if i know how to begin then i am already many steps ahead so simply we can go and tell her mother i i i feel the urge to walk the way but i don't know how to begin we can ask her to teach us and things will awaken within us we will be inspired we'll come across a book we'll read a sentence somebody will tell us something and we'll move it's not like a book or else something else may happen she may say my child you want to do it yourself or will you can i carry you and we may say mother i don't know how to begin will you do it for me and she will carry us so the path can become like this so it's not about how to do yoga that is not the challenge the challenge is can we really in all earnestness give ourselves to the divine and it looks very simple but for some reason which personally at least i have i don't know i won't say i have understood i have not understood but there is a resistance to give oneself to the divine perhaps because we hold our individuality so so sacred that any talk of surrender and self giving there is a discomfort that oh my god I, you know i lose myself and mother would say well my child when you give yourself to the divine he raises you to its ultimate possibility he doesn't need that he needs it only so that he can work upon it when we give ourselves to the divine what does he do what is his swabhav that's that's why he is like parasmani and when we give our 
iron and touch it with the paras money what happens he transmutes it and gives it back to us now when he gives it back changed into gold and we say but where is my iron so we want the gold and we also want the iron because we think we have lost something but if we really look at it in in a very direct way we what a wonderful bargain it is you know we we want to bargain what a wonderful bargain what is he asking us give me your lower nature full of ego riddled with the moved by the whip of desire full of this unnecessary pain and suffering which comes naturally you know by being by breathing this earth nature what are you going to give me in return well i'll give you peace and light and beatitude and harmony and love and ananda but can you not give me when i hold it back my child if you hold it back there'll be no space for me i want you to give these things so that there is space for me to come if you hold back to your old ways of thinking living being where is the space for me to enter so that is the big challenge and you know to let go of these things it's not something beautiful and that's what should bindu says why do we hold on to anger jealousies um, lust and greed and you know fears for what reason and if you give it and she said give them to me she she would often say i don't want your package of virtues i have seen through these things enough give me all this which is in your nature without any hesitation very often you know she would would say have you written to the mother have you met the mother write everything to the mother so some disciple would go and say mother you know everything what is the need to write mother said yes i know everything but i want to see how much you are conscious about yourself <laughs> simple thing can we imagine that writing to mother becomes yoga somebody would patent it as lippy yoga be careful ha huh? <laughs> the lot of you know new gurus which may come up even in integral yoga or oh through me you can go to the mother and patent it as lippy yoga but what a simple way to speak to her i can't meditate all right go and meet the mother speak see what was the yoga in ashram life and it's a hint of what yoga should be what was the routine of a sadhak very often people ask what is the routine now think about it 60 years back when somebody asked what is the routine you follow what he would say we wake up in the morning and we get ready where to go to oh mother's balcony darshan 6 o'clock so they go for the mother's balcony darshan after that oh after that we go to a departments then we also sometimes come for mother's vegetable darshan <laughs> there is flower darshan when mother is seeing all this and disciples are running sometimes you know when mother would walk very fast sometimes they would want to have her darshan when she is coming out to the ashram then run to the playground when she is going in the car that i should reach there there was a particular disciple you know he would he it is it was his work to see that the mother sits in the car and would close the door and he must open it again so it was his yoga so he would close the door now you know it's a game mother would play and he would run fast speed and stand at the playground the moment mother's car comes he opens the car like a child i met these people it's an humbling experience to meet them they never you know gave us big lectures on you know do it like this do it like that but in their life they exuded love they exclu- exuded the spirit of surrender they were people who were much changed in their being very often i i wondered ki how these people can do such things so naturally and spontaneously without any selfish interest and still there are so many people because this is the path through which they have gone and then again the whole day department when somebody asked you bindu i want to come to practice this yoga um bill the mother give me the mantra so shubindu says writes a letter reply the mother does not give mantra she gives work <laughs> work day and night there are people who are working like monkey but rama's monkey 
they have no time sometimes even to sit for meditation i have seen such people in the ashram and if you go at 10 o'clock sometimes they will come because work is over and they will sit and <laughs> you don't know whether they are sleeping or sitting 11 o'clock they will go back and 2:30 they are up and about doing the work and i am talking of today 40s 50s how how are they doing it where is the source of energy because they have learned this art this trick if i may say so of just surrendering to the mother this was the yoga then again after everything they are all you know those days they would all be sitting in the ashram courtyards waiting for mother to come the mother would sometimes come at 12 o'clock 1 o'clock and they are waiting sometime they would doze off and just before mother is coming it was given to one of the man who was in the military at some point of time hardhan and he had a very gruff voice and he would say on that you know announcement mother is coming mother is coming and everybody mother is coming mother is coming what a joyous thing just imagine for a moment everybody is sitting in the ashram court and mother will come mother is, mother is coming mother is coming ha ah, mother is coming and mother comes just a few minutes they breathe her atmosphere and she goes to the room there is another disciple waiting you know why these stories are important if you want to know about that's why we say just reading bhagavat is liberating and mother and shubindu there is a bhagavat of bhagavats so there is a disciple who came for a very from a very rich family and who who was living in a small little room and he was looking after the electrical department electricity problem now we have a department that time it was in charge of electricity <laughs> so you know when when he would go to sleep after mother has switched off her light he would wait to see when his mother light switched off and then he would go off to sleep and he had he was told that any time he can approach the mother any time and when would mother go off to so called switch off her light sometimes at 2 2 o'clock sometimes at 1 1:30 and then of course she would get up at 4 o'clock and all the people are going and meeting her this is the life and what wonderful change so what is this path of yoga this yoga is simply to give oneself to the divine mother how does it begin by a central giving central faith shubindu uses the word central sincerity what is central sincerity i want this nothing else nothing else can satisfy the thirst of my soul many lures will come and particularly the spiritual market today is flooded with gadgets and gurus and everybody is promising come here come here come here i'll give you some experience you know what your kundalini will awaken yeah <laughs> and you are on a vibrator and kundalini awakens <laughs> oh i get this experience oh you want nirvana oh guru ji has assured that next life you will definitely be you know up and above many things will come but no central sincerity is not detailed sincerity this is my life this is my path this is my goal wherever she takes me holding my hand if she takes me through the fires of hell she is there holding me if she takes me you know prahlad this is the path of oneness and mother said that this is true what was prahlad's path mother is holding me he didn't use the word mother narayana is holding me fire no problem narayana is holding me <laughs> from the mountain cliff narayana is holding me and mother said he who can live with this sense of the one is always protected under whatever circumstances so in every situation and circumstance to begin to feel her hand this is the goal this is the path central sincerity then spontaneously it will spread into many parts and that's a long journey sincerity in the mind in the heart in the life impulsions in the vital in the lower vital in the body that's a different story will not go but central fundamental fundamental faith that yes the divine exists what is the faith that shubindu asks us to have not a dogmatic belief in this cult or that cult he says the fundamental faith needed for this yoga is that the divine exists number one obviously if there is no divine there is no yoga second 
that if he has called me to the path, he knows better than me. Very often when we go through states of despair and darkness, so there is the dark path and the sunlit path. The dark path is I am no good, I am unworthy. See my life, I am entangled with hundred things. Are she is Bandhan Mukta. If she wants in one moment, she has kept us because you have to go through a process. So, to trust that the divine, if he has called me to the path, he is wise enough. He knows how to take me to the end. He will use everything as a means and a material for my progress. And then he says, and to cleave to the path. This is what is important. So He says, this is the faith that is required. Nothing complicated about it. That there is the divine and the divine has called me to the path. He will take me. I will reach in his own time. I will not insist in my own time. I will reach in his own time by the path that he takes me and all that is needed is to cleave to it. So this is the path of yoga. I have to have faith. Then mother said that give yourself. This is very difficult because by nature we are taught from childhood practical, we become practical men. But practical people don't give. They take. And if they give, they first want to make sure what they will get. If I give 10 rupees to the divine, how much he will give me back? 100? Then another divine will say, no, no, I'll give you 200. Okay, this divine is better. This is bargaining. This is not giving. Giving is not done with this idea of what I will get. So how do I give myself? Mother says, with the mind, give your thoughts. What does it mean, give my thoughts? If you see the whole day, where all our thoughts are running, normally around our little self and petty things. How long shall you tread the circling tax of mind around our little self and petty things? Through the day we are concerned about my well-being, my benefits, my profits, what somebody did to me, what somebody said to me, what somebody did not do to me, what somebody did not say to me. Thoughts. When we give ourselves to the divine means to fill these thoughts with thoughts turned towards the mother. How to do it? Very simple. Every time we catch ourselves thinking about ourselves, we should give ourselves a small little gentle slap. You idiot, you want to think about yourself? Or you want to use this time to think about the divine? Then you know we'll say, mother, 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 mother. Then again, after a time, the mind will slip into back, into oh, my life, it's so miserable. I'm telling you the simplest and straight road to misery is to think about oneself. Anybody in the world, even a king, if he thinks about oneself, one will find life miserable. This is the nature of human because always we'll see what we do not have. And the other way is to think about the divine, as simple as that. How to think about the divine? Is it something to be taught? If nothing else, take a book and read. If not that, just call ma, ma, ma. Allow a line or two of Savitri to run into the head. Memorize a passage, anything. The methods will emerge. So this is giving oneself in the mind. Another act of giving in the mind is, supposing we, read, we have some opinion and we read something from Mother and Shubindu which contradicts our opinion. What should we do? Most logical thing, where is this opinion and where is the Lord's truth? Change your opinion, as simple as that. This will bring into the mind plasticity and vastness. But instead we say, well, Shurabindo has this to say, but in my opinion, so Shurabindo will say, all right, your opinion, please keep it. Thank you so much. But those who know the act of surrender, whatever our opinion may be, and all of us, I tell you, you know, it's, it's not easy, it sounds very simple. For instance, I myself used to at one point feel, oh, we must help mankind. And then when I read mother saying that, you know, it is one of the illusions <laughs> helping humanity. I said, my God, <laughs> illusion, I lived in an illusion. And then the moment you say, yes, what you say is truth, the truth is revealed to you. What is the truth behind it? So these are simple ways by which we give our mind to the divine, our thoughts to the divine, self-giving. 
giving of our emotions and our heart does it mean we will now onwards not love anybody but only say no no don't come i have na mata na bhrata na bandhu <laughs> shubhendra doesn't want us to do that they are lovely aphorisms at one place he says you know uh, to commit adultery with god this world was perfectly created and then he says we owe to the world something by way of duty all the worldly relations towards our wife our friend our father mother we have certain duty and we are bound to it by duty but our secret love goes always to the divine beloved and paramour <laughs> whom do we should really love the divine secretly there is a joy in that you know that's why romance is celebrated why because it's something secret it's not something to be shown not jumping and dancing and ah oh, i love you mother so much mother is not impressed by that show inside i love my ego no inside deep within if somebody shook us in the middle of the night and said whom do you love ma is that a question to be asked aren't you alone somebody who has given everything to us from you know we often say we should be grateful to our parents all right yes they have formed a body we should be grateful to our teachers yes they have formed our mind and personality what about someone who walks with us from life to life who will walk with us beyond the pyre and the grave should we not be be grateful so this is giving in the heart gratitude and then the heart is filled with sweetness very often people say i have bitterness in my heart the simple reason is because your heart is not given to the divine it is given to the ego when it is given to the divine bitterness will vanish like butter under the sun and in its place only sweetness will be there sweetness not only toward those who are good to us but also toward those who hurt us who say things which we don't want to hear will feel a constant flow of sweetness will be able to embrace everyone with that you know as an act of love because this heart has become a chalice filled with the ananda of divine love giving one's energies if we see from day to night where are our energies di- directed mostly towards the satisfaction of our ego interests can we turn these energies towards the divine working in this creation it doesn't mean we have to change profession whatever we are doing instead of it just being a job which fetches us money and satisfies my ego can it becomes a means for his worship then our job becomes our temple god it is true has run away from most of the temples but he has come to the offices because he was very sick and tired you know they have kept me in the temple and then they burn all kinds of agarbatti some some of them i am allergic to you know sometimes strange smells you will get agarbatti with ghee diya batti and floor is dirty and you know a strange smell and we want to capture god there and you know in front of it will be a fat mustanda priest you know you feel terrified before him and god is chinnasa you know poor god is small little you can't go past the priest you are looking for some way to so you know he has run away so those who are say ki you know what should we do in the temples please stay away most of the temples have become devoid but where has he come he has come into homes into office places he sits on our desk on next to our computer and says here i am do you notice me yes mother i know you are here that is giving our energies to the lord how do we do with the body how to give the body mother says very simple to work for the divine is to pray with the body one of the first things that the mother taught when she came you know she started something called a new idea 1914 with those handful of people who were there so people would sit once a week for you know she didn't use the word satsang and they would pick up something a, a, a new thought a new idea and they would contemplate on that a new idea and the second thing she did was that she would say you must we see the charter once in a week for one hour 
you should dedicate to a selfless activity it starts with that so we it's we can take this resolve that at least once a week one hour i'll not do something for myself or my family or people who will satisfy and flatter my ego but let it be a selfless action not even for my name and fame but it's an action dedicated only for the divine and it could be any action and then slowly the the big um, uh, problem is or the big um, uh, advantage is if we give a little to the divine he is not satisfied he will start with that and then he will take the whole of us this duryodhana knew a very intelligent fellow so when krishna said give me five villages he said i know you you are a dangerous fellow you will start with five villages and finish my empire this was the silent communication between duryodhana and krishna not documented in the mahabharata <laughs> don't ask me where did i read it so when duryodhana said like this to krishna i know your games your tricks so krishna says anyways up to you even if you don't give me i am going to take it anyways it is mine <laughs> and the time has come for me to reclaim it so it doesn't matter we start by giving some time to the divine it may be half an hour one minute one hour depending on jaisi hamari shraddha something of our wealth to the divine something of our life that's what the mother puts in the beginning of prayers and meditation some time in just reading if we don't understand what is the problem as if we understand other things sometimes i recommend this if life divine is difficult please read kant you know it's become fashionable oh, i've read kant and i said can you understand or you can't because you know i read kant as 15 year old and i know what it means you know to read kant so i would tell them you if you read kant then shubhendu is very simple <laughs> he is lot more direct or if nothing else read um, sankracharya i can tell you after that life divine will appear a lot more simple <laughs> very difficult doesn't matter the difficulty is solved by doing it if this is my way then this is my way what is life divine but sure been those letter to us he is talking to us what you should do to realize the divine life all right if i don't understand i should tell mother i don't understand please make me understand amrit das story you know disciples are reading um mother goes by what are you doing amrita mother we are reading three of them mother we are reading life divine oh life divine what are you reading mother we are reading brahmana ishwara maya but mother you know we understand nothing <laughs> so sweet i said you understand nothing but you must read it very good you must read it and then she tapped them on the head and went you must read it and they entered into a trance and after half an hour when mother comes they are still in that she calls them back and said you know my child i can give you brahman realization like this but we are not here for that we are here for something else in one sentence she revealed to them the truth but we have to do our bit instead of wasting time let us read the life divine if i don't understand at least i will get a good sleep is that a bad proposition we'll save upon sedatives it'll be a relaxing sleep so i often advise that why do you want sedatives read a chapter of life divine <laughs> and if you can bear it and not sleep most likely after one chapter you will feel like reading the second one and maybe after that the third one ultimately you will sleep so it's a win win situation if you don't sleep you read the life divine and if you slept very good you slept reading the life divine you know there is a very nice couplet of um, amir khusro he says khush um, khusro ran suhag ki main jaagi pi ke sang on the night of her honeymoon she is he is addressing to the lord i kept awake with my lord you know keeping awake with life divine so what happens he says khusro ran suhag ki main jaagi pi ke sang jeet gaye jeet gayi to piya mere hari to pi ke sang if i win the game the lord is mine if i lose the game i am the lords so both way it is a win win situation if we don't understand the life the time was so beautifully utilized at least it goes into our account divine will add credit and add it if not understood very good he will write 
If we say we understood, he'll say, ah, this man, ignorant. He believes he has understood life divine. <laughs> so such a simple path. What is the name for this path? Basically to center our life around the mother, around the divine. In any which way, walking, sitting, thinking, brushing, bathing, and Shivinda give it the name, the sunlit path. That means that light invades every sphere of life. You know, lamplit path is this much I see, the rest I do not see. Starlit path is, oh, I have to move in this direction, there is a guidance, but I have to do it by myself. Moonlit path is, sometime I am full of josh and effort, and then when the moon is in Amavasya, I don't feel like doing anything, it's despair. But we don't have to go through that. That days are over. Sunlit path, always luminous and bright. Always happy. We don't have to suffer. You know, it, this sunlit path is in opposition to the dark path, which people often believe you have to suffer to go to God. And some people have turned it into such a perversion as if God wants our suffering. They beat themselves, they bleed themselves and they call it going to the divine. Going to the divine is to go to the all delightful. It is ananda. In fact, one of the signs that we are approaching him is that we feel more and more joy inside. And if we have a latkawa face, that means something is seriously wrong with us. The more serious we are getting outwardly means the more we are straying away. Inward seriousness is another matter. And even that brings us delight. It's a path of delight. So sunlit path is opposed to the other path where we believe we must suffer. We must only look at food. Sorry for that, Govind. You are doing it. You are doing it in a very nice way and all encouragement. But we must not we must look at food like a witness purusha and not eat it. So if you want to know what a witness purusha is, please observe him when he is having the dinner. We will learn what is witness purusha. For quite some time he is looking at the plate. It's good. These practices are helpful. I am not denying it. But the sunlit path is. We don't have to do this. We don't have to put ourselves in. I mean, this is okay, this is for health. But we don't have to do this, put ourselves, you know, lest the message is misunderstood. <laughs> you know, it's not about the being indulgent that, oh, from now I. No, he's not, it's not the. It's not about this extreme or that extreme. It is simply stay balanced. Keep your head on the shoulders. Some people follow extreme. Oh, now Shirobindo is talking to me and guiding me and they shut themselves into, they begin to believe I am the world redeemer. Oh, the world redeemer is there, he is doing his job, please let him do it. <laughs> let me be redeemed. But we want to become world re redeemer. So the ego takes that aggrandized form and people withdraw, start, you know, not meeting anybody, not smiling. And while they think they are doing great sadhana, those who have actually followed the path, they start feeling something is seriously wrong with this guy. <laughs> Sooner or later, at least I know he's going to land up either with me or with, you know, uh, psychiatrist part I'm saying, or with one of the... Because it's dangerous. It's a path of joy. Not a vital joy. Though Sri Aurobindo said even vital joy is better than despair. But a joy that comes from the soul. When we are going to meet our Lord, our beloved, our Divine Mother, how can any moment be a moment of sorrow? It will be a cause of celebration. So, you know, I don't know where to stop, what a topic you have, you know, given me. But let me, I must read a letter of Sri Because this is something which is uh, too tempting and, you know, one day, I, I had thought that we'll just start a few minutes and then we'll have question answers. So, Look at Sri compassion. Mother has said, two things you must never forget. Sri compassion and the mother's love. Forget everything else. It doesn't matter. One of the letters. <clears throat> you say, that this way is too difficult for you or the likes of you. This is one of the ways that darkness captures us and keeps us away from the path. Oh, it is very difficult. Only some very highly intellectual Harvard graduates can do it. They are the most unfit of fellows. Maximum people in the ashram come from small villages of Odisha. 
and they know the yoga in their bones they cannot give much lecture but they know it in their bones and ask them what is yoga what is that give it to the mother you know i often narrate this incidents and i found it very funny when uh, a odia friend of mine tells me ki, you know why people what is the job you do i said i am a psychiatrist means what i said no people come and talk about their problems and you know issues but why do they speak to you i said are i am a psychiatrist don't you understand no but why they come to you now i was at loss to you know explain why should they not come to me the ego of the psychiatrist what do you mean i am nobody and nothing <laughs> so i said no no but i am a psychiatrist isn't it no 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 they should go to samadhi and just tell the mother why do they come to you i said ah yes yes that i understand very well i said because they don't know this they have to come via me <laughs> so don't you tell them to go to the samadhi and turn to mother i said no no then they will stop coming to me and go to somebody else they want you know the problem to be very complicated so they'll go to a psychiatrist and psychiatrist will make it very complicated childhood trauma what happened what was the issue you know oh oh my god your wife said this to you or your husband is very harsh to you oh yes yes tell me i will analyze all your defense are it's so simple life of ignorance is like that <laughs> and if he simply gives a prescription after hearing everything turn to the divine mother <laughs> imagine they will come out and say you know this fellow needs help <laughs> so this is he says you say that it is only avatars like myself or the mother that can do it and then shubhin says that is a strange misconception for it is on the contrary mind shubhin those words on the contrary the easiest and simplest and most direct way and anyone can do it shubhin those words there is an if what is the if if he can make his mind and vital quiet so mother you do it i have thought enough <laughs> mother would often give this example of the archer who was shooting arrows at night and eventually he didn't succeed or so he thought and exhausted he gave up when he woke up in the morning he saw the whole field was strewn with you know all his fruits so mind and vital quiet and then he says something very interesting even those who have a tenth of your capacity can do it he is telling a particular disciple it is the other way of tension and strain and hard endeavor that is difficult and needs a great force of tapasya other way oh i must sit so many hours in meditation i must do so many japas i must do so many pranayams and shrinivas practices he says that is the difficult path as for the mother and myself we had have had to try all ways follow all methods to surmount mountains of difficulties a far heavier burden to bear than you or anybody else in the ashram or outside far more difficult conditions battles to fight wounds to endure ways to cleave through impenetrable morass and desert and forest hostile masses to conquer a work such as i am certain none else had to do before us so he first says you know gives his example but then he says something very interesting for the leader of the way in a work like ours has not only to bring down and represent and embody the divine but to represent to the ascending element in humanity and to bear the burden of humanity to the full and experience not in a mere play or leela but in grim earnest all the obstruction difficulty opposition baffled and hampered and only slowly victorious labor which are possible on the path so you know they have to represent that part you know that famous story when all the stones are floating on the ocean they say jai shri ram and stones are floating so rama wonders what is this secret so at night quietly he sits and takes a stone and puts it into the into the sea and plop it drowns now he is surprised picks up the stone plop it drowns he is what is this so hanuman is watching so he says lord it is natural what is natural they take my name and the stone float floats and when i drop it it drowns he says yes it is natural somebody whom you leave is bound to drown So, so 
<laughs> so please don't leave it. If you leave it, it's drowning. <laughs> so look at you know he says I had to bear it. Rama has to feel his veil his divinity, suffer the agony of Sita's absence, fight the demon king. All this he has to do, but he doesn't want us to start fighting. You know, all the Ravanas in this world, <laughs> but the Ravana within us is good enough. Then he says, but it is not necessary. Look at the words. But it is not necessary, nor tolerable, that all that should be repeated over again to the full in the experience of others. We'll have our small little Ravanas to fight. Usually, our ego, ten-headed, hundred-headed, doesn't matter. But he says it's not only advisable, nor even tolerable. This is not what he expects us to do. It is because we have the complete experience that we can show a straighter and easier road to others. If they will only consent to take it, that much he leaves to us. Will you walk? If you don't want to walk, Shubhendu, lover of freedom, says, please remain free in your ignorance and find whatever you have to find. It is because of our experience, won at a tremendous price. That we can urge upon you and others, take the psychic attitude. Follow the straight, sunlit path. Psychic attitude. So, what is the psychic attitude? Follow the straight, sunlit path with the divine openly or secretly upbearing you. We may not always see. Trust that she is carrying me. And then he ends by saying. If secretly, he will yet show himself in good time. Do not insist on the hard, hampered, roundabout, and difficult journey. And then another letter with which we can probably, you know, stop or take some questions. <clears throat> Peace was the very first thing that the yogis and seekers of old asked for. And it was a quiet and silent mind, and that always brings peace. That they declared to be the condition for realizing the divine. A cheerful and sunlit heart is the fit vessel for the ananda. So we should walk on this path cheerfully, not with a grim face. In fact, Mother says pessimism is the sign of the devil. If we are feeling pessimistic and despairing, that means that fellow is nearby with his tail or horns or whatever, sitting on our shoulders and telling us, you are not good, not worthy, not fit. It means he doesn't know about grace. That's how the mother put it, that they, he doesn't know about grace. And who shall say that ananda or what prepares it is an obstacle to the divine union? As for despondency, it is surely a terrible burden to carry on the way. One has to pass through it sometimes like Christian of the pilgrim progress, through the slough of despond, but its constant reiteration cannot be anything but an obstacle. Sometimes it will come in life, we can't help it. But it's not the way to follow and not something which we should desire. I know perfectly well that pain and suffering and struggle and excesses of despair are natural, though not inevitable on the way. Again, qualifying it. They come, but it's not necessary. Not because they are helps, but because they are imposed on us by the darkness of this human nature, out of which we have to struggle into the light. And then he gives the example of another great yogi. Ramakrishna was not ignorant that there was a sunlit path of yoga. He even seems to say that it is the quicker way as well as the better. The baby cat attitude. That is why people, when they go to the ashram, they are looking for sometimes sadhaks. So, they have an idea of sadhaks. So, they are looking for somebody clad in girwa, you know, who is... This is a strange misconception that if you are wearing cloth of a particular color, you have renounced the world. So I like sometimes to tease. So I ask, okay, can you renounce your girwa or your white dress and wear, a, let's say, a green and blue combination? 
How about renouncing attachment to this dress and wearing jeans and kurta for a change? You see, renunciation falls flat. Can you renounce this? Uh, you know, you are always sitting tight inside this. Can you come for a movie to watch Bahubali 2? <laughs> no, 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 you are blasphemous. You are spoiling my yoga, destroying me. If you are in yoga, you don't need this. It is a facade. So they are looking for that kind of a yogi, you know. They don't find, so they wonder where is somebody who is doing yoga. Nobody will say in the ashram that I am doing yoga. If somebody says I am a sadhak, people say, oh, he is still new. When people say, what sadhana? Mother does everything. Then, ah, he is now well grounded. <laughs> so, you know, he says that it is not necessary. It is not because I have myself trod the sunlit way. Because Shubindo took upon himself all the burden of humanity or flinched from difficulty and suffering and danger. I have had my full share of these things and the mother has had ten times her full share. She took upon herself all the diseases, all the problems of humanity. At several points of time, she was on the verge of death. Thrice actually died in the sense technically the cord is cut. But she comes back. She says that she had to take these things. But that was because the finders of the way had to face these things in order to conquer. No difficulty that can come on the sadhak, but has faced us on the path. Against many, we have had to struggle hundreds of times. In fact, that is an understatement before we could overcome. Many still remain protesting that they have a right until the perfect perfection is there. But we have never consented to admit their inevitable necessity for others. See, this compassion of the Lord. We will go through. You know, we read this in Ramayana and it touches us when Ravana shoots an arrow at Vibhishan. What does Lord Rama do? Does not say, Vibhishan, it's your moment for courage. Didn't you learn archery? He just puts Vibhishan behind him and faces that arrow and it touches him. It's a very beautiful, touching story. He doesn't want us to go through that. He will fight the battle if we allow him to. <coughs> it is in fact to ensure an easier path to others hereafter that we have borne that burden. It was with that object that the mother once prayed to the divine. Look at her prayer. Divine praying to the divine. What is she praying for? That whatever difficulties, dangers, sufferings, where necessary for the path, might be laid on her rather than on others. This prayer is there in her prayers and meditation. It has been so far granted her. Look at the touch of love. She has prayed that all the difficulties that come on them may come on me. Open them a free path. <coughs> and Sri says, it has been so far granted her as a result of daily and terrible struggle for years that those who put an entire and sincere confidence in her <coughs> are able to follow the sunlit path and even those who cannot yet when they do put the trust find their path suddenly easy. So even those who cannot, after a while, they find it easy, if they can trust. And if it becomes difficult again, it is only when distrust, revolt, abhiman, or other darknesses come upon them. The sunlit path is not altogether a fable. And look at this last passage in this letter. But you will ask, what of those who cannot? So Sri is anticipating. Many will say, okay, it's all very fine. I cannot tread the sunlit path. So the Lord has foreseen and is catering to them also. But you will ask, what of those who cannot? Well, it is for them. I am putting forth all my efforts to bring down the supramental force within a measurable time. 
those who can take the sunlit path nothing more is needed but you will see that those who cannot surrender the mother to the mother they will talk about supramental force and records of yoga and how i will do it myself but those who know what force supramental or otherwise can be greater than the divine mother they just know to give themselves like a child in her hands and all else is done for them the dark path is there and there are many who make like the christians a gospel of spiritual suffering many hold it to be the unavoidable prize of victory so much so that if you see somebody happy and cheerful you say oh he is not doing yoga how can a yogi be cheerful he can laugh he can joke he is supposed to be looking serious sitting all the time in padmasana so look how you know what he is saying it may be so under certain circumstances as it has been in so many lives at the beginning or one may choose to make it so but then the price has to be paid with resignation fortitude or a tenacious resilience i admit that a bone in that way the attacks of the dark forces or the ordeals that they oppose have a meaning after each victory gained over them there is then a sensible advance so many have done the yoga relying on tapasya or anything else so many have done yoga relying on tapasya or anything else but not confident of any divine grace there are people who have taken that route it is not that but the soul's demand for a higher truth or a higher life that is indispensable where that is the divine grace whether believed in or not will intervene so it's not even that whether we really believe in the grace or not she is there and she will respond to the sincerity of our aspiration if you believe that hastens and facilitates things if you cannot yet believe still the soul's aspiration will justify itself with whatever difficulty and struggle so in every which way he has opened the path for all kinds of humanity for all the difficulties the dangers the ordeals but to us the command is take the psychic attitude follow the sunlit path so <clears throat> we can pause here